Hi, my name is Chala, and I'm a final year civil engineering student at University of Manchester. Hi, I'm Lee Cunningham. I'm the Head of Education for Civil Engineering. And today we will answer the Internet's most asked questions about civil engineering. This one is, well, this is a loaded question. And my focus this year is earthquake engineering and fire engineering. Um, I mostly uh, teach uh, structural engineering. I'm particularly interested in design of structures in extreme environments, so things like fire and seismic actions uh, and extreme weather events uh, like flooding and things like that. Okay, so the first question is, what is civil engineering? Civil engineering is all around us. It's something that sustains civil society. Without civil engineering, um, we wouldn't be able to live the way we do today. So all of the infrastructure that we see around us, all of the buildings, bridges, all of the infrastructure carrying our water supplies, all of these things are designed by civil engineers and constructed by civil engineers. Yeah. I agree. And I would just say it's an essential type of engineering needed to both mitigate the global climate change risks and also to improve the cities and all of our infrastructure's resilience against it. So the next one, the next question is, why is civil engineering important? So it's important for both mitigating, so a civil engineer could work on turbine stations, designing different types of energy, renewable energy generation, but then also in terms of improving resilience, they could retrofit old buildings so that they're more resilient to flooding or coastal defenses because of rising sea levels. A lot of these things civil engineers can have an impact on. Um, what we do as civil engineers, as Charles just outlined, is to have a direct impact on the effects of climate change and also helping to reduce climate change. So in the case of our existing built environment, we can protect our infrastructure uh, against these extreme weather events that are being driven by climate change, but at the same time we acknowledge, uh, and this is the major challenge in construction, we acknowledge uh, construction's role in carbon footprints, which is a major contributor to climate change, and by choosing um, innovative ways and new ways to, to design and construct innovative materials, etc., we can reduce our carbon footprint and help potentially slow down climate change. So our next one is, what is the future of civil engineering? Well, this is a loaded question. Yeah, so again, at the moment, um, civil engineering faces the, the major challenge of climate change that we've talked about, and we can see that accelerating uh, in terms of its impetus and we can expect more uh, innovative materials, more innovative ways to construct, for example, 3D printing, um, innovative materials. Here at Manchester, we are quite prevalent in use of graphene in construction, for example. We can expect these sorts of materials to help us reduce our carbon footprint uh, and increase the longevity of our built environment around us. A lot of the parts that, of civil engineering that you don't think of, such as legal legislation or project management, as all countries are starting to interact more and we're becoming a global village, all of these things actually have to be altered and changed, and it's still changing to reduce the risks on site, to reduce risks between teams. So all of these things that you might not think is civil engineering is also integrated into that. And that's an excellent point because a lot of the work that we do here at Manchester, particularly in the project management sphere, is influencing government policy, uh, both nationally and internationally. And Manchester's been quite leading in that. Next one. The next one. Is civil engineering in demand? What do you think? <laughs> Absolutely. I'd say definitely we are. it is, yeah. As we hopefully outlined already, there's so many different avenues associated with civil engineering. We've talked about project management, we've talked about structures, we've talked about uh, water management and water supply and infrastructure uh, uh, design. There's so many different fields of civil engineering and because it is essential to sustaining the way we live today, we can envisage that civil engineering will remain in demand for a long time to come. Yeah. 
I definitely agree. If there are humans, then civil engineering will be in demand because we need shelter, we need water, we need to be able to treat that water and then take that wastewater out and be able to dump it somewhere safely. So, yeah. Should I choose civil engineering or architecture? Okay, because that, that could be regarded as a loaded question and <laughs> in some ways I guess it there might be some overlap or perceived overlap between the two. Both areas are involved in the built environment. Both areas are being creative. But um, architecture will tend to focus specifically on building form, on buildings themselves, the, 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 the appearance and the, the, the practicalities of the building. Whereas a structural engineer, which is a part of civil engineering, will focus on how that building stands up. From a student's perspective, I'd also say I have a couple of friends that do architecture. And from what I've seen, even though you study maths and physics in both courses, civil engineering is definitely a lot more maths and physics focused. But structural engineering is just part of civil engineering. As we've outlined already, there's so many different facets of civil engineering which architecture doesn't cover. Last question. Last question. What skills do I need for civil engineering? Well, we've talked about um, maths and physics. That's certainly part of it. Uh, that helps. I think at the heart of this is being creative and the ability to apply your knowledge of the fundamental principles in a creative way. And this is why there's, um, there are many different possibilities to solving a particular design brief. This is where the engineer exercises the creativity. Um, and I think that's a key skill. Uh, along with the understandable analytical skills that are required f uh, from an engineer. Definitely. I'd also say something that's important and you will have to start using from the first day of your course is teamwork, collaboration and leadership because it all goes hand in hand. So you need to be able to relinquish power sometimes but then sometimes be able to take the lead. Um, because as a civil engineer you're going to be working on projects with multiple teams and each of those teams are going to have plethora of people from so many different backgrounds. So you're going to be able to talk to them, make sure that they understand the concepts you're very familiar with, but they might not be as familiar with. So you need to get used to working with people. Yeah, so, so civil engineers are good communicators. They are good team players. Uh, and they're able to exercise project management skills in order to deliver projects because civil engineering projects will typically be very high value. We're talking about millions of, of pounds of, of, of investments. So exercising that, that level of project management is really important and having that skill. Yeah, definitely. And that kind of connects back to the project management point we said about what is the future of civil engineering. There are so many new project management research going on or different ways where people can improve communication because as Lee said one mistake can mean so much damage and yeah. immense amounts of money but yes <laughs>